Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so we've talked about how to use an input function to accept user um, data from the user, right? And um, use them use them in our programs. Um, but there's something about the input function that you have to know. So anytime you call or anytime you use an input function, the actual term for it is call. Anytime you call the input function, again, we'll talk more about functions, so don't worry. Anytime we call the input function and we display a prompt or a message to the user to say, for example, enter, um, let's say, a number, right? Enter a number. We know that the input function is going to pop up or create some kind of space for the user to type, okay, in a value. And whatever the user types is going to be returned back. We know that, right? But the thing with the input function is that anything that it returns back from the user, anything that the user has typed is returned back as a string. It's returned back or it's sent back to us as a string. Even if the user types in a real number over here, right? You may think that, okay, the user has typed in, let's say, the number five. And you may think you have the number five. Fine, you have the number five, all right. But five is stored as a string. It's a string five, not a number five, not an int five, right? It's a string five because the input function always returns whatever the user has typed back to us. It sends it back to us as a string. So an example over here, I've used the input function. I'm asking the user to enter a number. The user enters a number. The input function is going to return back what the user has typed. I need a place to store it. So over here, I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it user input string okay i'm going to call user input string because i know that the input function will always return a string even if the user types in a number or a string or any anything the user types is going to be returned back to me as a string i know that so the thing that the thing the problem with this is that anytime the user types in let's say if you need if you really expe are expecting a number an integer for example from the user and it comes back to you as a string let's say you wanted to perform some math with that with that value that the user has typed. You can't because it's stored as a string. You need it as a number if you want to really perform math calculations on it. So we have to first of all go ahead and convert whatever is stored in this variable here as a string. We need to convert it first of all to a number. In this case, I want an integer. So we can even change it to say, let's start with just an int or an integer. So we know the user is going to type in an integer. The integer is going to be stored here as a string. We have to first of all convert it to a real int because it's stored here as a string before we can use it. And the way to do that is with an int function, right? Before that, let's just print out the content of user input string. So when I run this, well, let's just add our colon here in a space. Stop. All right. Run this. Enter an integer, I enter the number five and hit enter. It prints to me the number five, right? I have the number five here, but that, this number five here is stored as a string and not as an int. So to really, you know, have, to really, you know, have that number as an int, we have to first of all convert it. If we wanted let to, let, let's say, perform some math with it, we have to first of all convert it, right? So the way to do that is with an int function. Assuming we wanted to, assuming we wanted an int or an integer, the way to do that is with an int function. You call the name int. Remember, a function is just one or more lines of code that is wrapped up together and then given a name. And anytime you call the name of a function, anytime you call the name of a function, the lines of code that the programmers, you know, the other people who developed Python, the Python language have created, the lines of code that they have already defined, the predefined functions, the lines of code that they've already written will execute anytime you call the name. We don't see the lines of code because it's already been de designed and hidden somewhere. All we have to do is just call its name and then it does what it's supposed to do. It runs the lines of code that is designed in the function. We will learn more about fu functions and we will learn how to create our own functions, right? But for now, the people who developed the Python language have created these functions for us to use, okay? So that we don't have to do it all over again. And so the end function, we know functions sometimes take extra information, okay, so that they, they can work with it. They need it so they can work with it. So the int function needs something, and whatever you give it, right, it's basically going to convert whatever you give it to an integer and then return it back to you and then give it back. So it's saying, okay, give me 
what you want me to convert to an integer and now when I'm done converting it to an integer I'll, I'll send it back to you okay when I'm done converting it to an int I'll send it back to you so in this case we know what's stored in here is a string we want to convert that into an int so I'm going to pass in okay the, the process of giving it that information is what's called passing an argument so I'm passing in this becomes an argument and we'll learn more about functions again so don't worry I'm passing in this information which is really called an argument I'm passing in an argument to the to the int function I'm passing in you know I'm giving it this and saying okay take this argument I'm passing it to you work with it and give me your result it's going to convert this value to an int and then send it back to me now when it's sending it back to me when it's returning it back to me I need a place to store it right so I'm going to create a variable over here I'm going to call it user number and user number is going to store whatever the int function has taken and converted to an int right so the int function takes this value convert it to an int and then returns it back it, it sends it back to us and so we have this variable to store that value and now I can use a print statement for example to print out the content of user number it's gonna look like you know I run this program it's gonna look like the, the previous example we run I type in the number 5 hit enter and 5 is displayed the only difference is that this 5 this the value here in user number is now an int because we've converted it to an int we know that anything that an input function returns back to us is always a string right and if we wanted to perform math on a string we'll have some problems so we need to have it as a number before we can perform math now I can say okay print out what's stored in user number add one to it okay add one to it and print out what's stored in user number so user number is five take five and add one to it and print out the result for me so now I should expect six right when I run my program type in the number five and hit enter it says six because I've properly converted this value okay this value here I've converted it to a number and now it's a real number so I can work work with it with math the same way if you wanted to convert a value to a float let's change the label to enter a float or enter a decimal whatever you want to type as, as the um, label so I'll change it to float and then the input function is going to display this message, message to the user the user is going to type in the decimal we are going to store the result here in user input string right but we're going to have that decimal or that floating point value stored as a string initially so if the user types in let's say 3.4 3.4 is going to be stored in user input string this variable as a string and not as a float if we want to have it as a float so we can actually perform math calculations with it we have to first use the float function not the int function this time the int function is only used when we want to convert something to an int this time around we want to convert it to a float and so we use what's called the float function and when you call the float function the float function just like the int function it takes in an argument it takes in something you give it something and what we want to give this float function is basically the content stored in user input string which is we, we know is a string so it's going to take that value convert it from a string to a float and return it back to us so it's saying okay I've taken what you've given me I've converted it to a float I've done my, my thing and I'm giving it back to you and so we are going to store it in user number so we know user number is going to have a proper float in it now over here when I print out what's stored in user number and I add one to it let's see what's going to happen let's run it I'm going to enter in 5 and hit enter but now we see 6.0 right because we are now dealing with a float and we are adding one to we're adding one to a float five was stored five was this five that was stored here as a string was converted to a float which became 5.0 so now 5.0 was stored here and 5.0 plus one okay is basically 6.0 because you're adding you know, an int to a float you're going to get the float right 5.0 plus one is 6.0 and that's why we are getting 6.0 here so this is how you use the int function and the float function to convert inputs that the user has typed to an int or a float to basically numbers and really work with them because other than that you your values that the user will type will always stay as a string and when you try to perform math with them you're going to get problems okay so I hope this is uh, clear if you have any questions please comments down below and I'll do everything to, re to respond to them thank you very much for watching take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time with the next video okay then bye bye